my pearl to you is to remember that we don't work for adults, we work for kids. My name is Leanne Toller, and I am very excited to share with you my uh, pearl and uh, an insight that I have uh, learned over the last few years that has shaped uh, significantly who I am as an educator and uh, a leader. And it started a few years ago with a quote from my then boss, mentor, and good friend, Melissa, who said to me, Leanne, we don't work for kids, or we don't work for adults, we work for kids. Uh, and at the time, I was a, a new leader in a middle level curriculum position and definitely didn't work with a lot of kids. And I just assumed that as you grew in leadership, you worked more with and for adults than you did with kids. Uh, uh, but her statement just flipped what I thought on its head and began to shift my approach to decision making and leading in schools. So. <clears throat> As I moved on to new schools and new roles, this idea that I work for kids, not adults, continues to frame everything that I do. And most notably in my most recent role that I'm leaving um, as the Diploma Program Coordinator and Assistant Principal at the International School of Uganda, I use this idea to underpin my approach to reviewing policies, empowering faculty, and working with students to amplify their voice in school. So here are a few practical things that I found um, shifted in my day to day when I think about working for kids rather than adults. Uh, so number one, be accessible. I use the Calendly app that Lee and G use. Uh, I put it in my email signature. I have it on a QR code outside my office so kids can come anytime they want to talk through anything. Oh, here's my son. Um, they can schedule a chat with me anytime uh, they want. Hold on a second, buddy. Number, the second practical thing I did is I sought their voice. Uh, I ensured as much as possible that every time we're discussing any policy decision uh, or something about our programming, that the students were there. Their voice was included in the process. Uh, I listened and act where possible. Uh, and when they gave their uh, feedback, when they included their voice, shared their opinion, I included those perspectives as equally or often more valuable than many of our other stakeholders. Um, but I wanted them to see their voice had power and meaning and ended up where possible in final decisions. I also uh, sought to build trust through transparency. And I found that working with students um, they may not always agree with the final outcome of a decision, but when you take the time to clearly communicate rationale, you talk to them in a manner that is respectful and empowering them, that they often, it goes a long way to having them buy in to that final decision. Um, and lastly, I uh, empowered them as much as possible. Uh, I gave them ownership of spaces. I um, allowed them to manage and make decisions where they saw, and I took more of a hands-on approach, but then only intervene when I felt it was necessary. Um, because again, I work with the oldest kids and I just think it's really empower powerful to treat them uh, as the young adults that they are. So my pearl to you is to remember that we don't work for adults, we work for kids. Um, we often worry too much about the impact of our work on the adults, what they will think, how they'll buy in. Uh, and then we sometimes uh, exclude oh, the student you. voice. And when we keep a student-centered focus, when we seek their perspective, when um, they can uh, see and feel their impact, it goes a long way to building a student-centered culture at your school. Mm -hmm.